Hey guys, it's Kay. Now recently I purchased a Lenovo Think Center just to do some home projects with it and the first project I'm going to do is make it into a games emulator. Now I got it for under £50 refurbished from an online retailer and I'm pretty happy with my purchase considering the form factor and it's an i3 with integrated graphics. Now before starting my emulator project I thought I'd upgrade the system so I started by upgrading the RAM from 4GB to 6GB by adding 2 gigs of RAM I had lying around. Now while I was under the covers I thought I'd clean out the fan and reapply thermal paste to the CPU and cooler. Now this was pretty straightforward, it just involved unscrewing a few screws. So after the fan was removed I cleaned out all the dust with a lens blower, just making sure I got everything out from the fan as well. I then moved on to the cooler, removing the four screws holding it down. After removing the screws the only thing holding it down was the dried up thermal paste. Now I made short work of this by rubbing it off with some paper towels and some alcohol. And I did the same for the cooler to reveal the copper. Now I just apply a pea sized dollop of thermal paste to the CPU. Then I just reattach the cooler making sure I get all the screws. And then it's just a matter of attaching the fan with all the screws. Now I also replaced the spinning hard disk with an SSD and I just cloned the Windows software over to it. Ok guys let's test this thing out. So we've got the Lenovo M83. We've got the i3 4130T processor with maximum frequency up to 2.9 GHz. Now it does this with 2 cores and 4 threads. Now I could have upgraded this chip to an i5 4590T which has got a base frequency of 2 GHz and boosts up to 3 GHz with 4 cores and 4 threads. And these cost around £40 on eBay. It's an option I might consider further down the line. Now memory wise we've got 6 GB of DDR3 RAM running at 1333 MHz. The main thing here is that we've got both memory slots filled, optimizing the system. So disk wise we've got the Adata SSD that I replaced the spinning hard disk with. Now this again will give us better read write speeds and optimize our system. And finally we've got our GPU which is the HD 4400 from Intel. Now this is built into the chip so it's not really made for gaming. But it should run some older game titles pretty well. But like I said I'm not focusing on PC gaming. I want to use this build for emulation gaming. So for this emulation gaming I'm going to use a front end called Launchbox. Ok I'm going to start up Launchbox. Now Launchbox is basically a gaming front end that supports a whole load of emulators and PC games for an all in one multimedia solution. It's simple to set up and boasts an automatic scraper for downloading game metadata and box art. Now I've got a few emulators set up with a few games each. So currently I'm viewing my games filtered by platform and this all view gives me a list of all the emulators and all the games. And I can split the view down to emulator types. So I've got my Nintendo GameCube, I've got my PSP. Now as you can see I quite like my PSP games on the emulator and I've got quite a collection. Now moving on, I've got my Sega Dreamcast, got my Sega Genesis. Now a good feature here is you can also zoom in and zoom out of your game art and get it to look the way you want. And I've got my Sony PlayStation, got my Sony PlayStation 2 and finally I've got my Super Nintendo SNES system. Ok guys I'm going to go ahead and play some games. Now in the top left hand corner I'm going to put the name of the game and the console. Ok so this is a PSP emulator and it looks pretty good on the big screen and we're running at around 60 frames per second and it's playing smooth, no screen tearing, so far no issues with the gameplay. Ok I'm going to play 10 or 20 seconds more of gameplay on the PSP and then move on to the next emulator. Ok moving on to the Sega Dreamcast and as we can see it's working pretty smooth. No issues with screen tearing or flickering and we're looking at a really good resolution here. And next we got the Sega Genesis and we got Sonic 2. This one's always been one of my favourites.
And the last one on the Sega Genesis is Streets of Rage. Takes me back to the arcades. And lastly, we got the Super Nintendo and Street Fighter. Okay guys, so overall this system has worked out just like I hoped it would. It's a small, portable, retro game simulator that can also handle some old PC games. Now if you like this kind of content, give us a like, and maybe even a subscribe, as it's more than likely I'll be doing a lot more projects like this.